My name is Mona King. I'm working at Institution Effectiveness since uh, 2017, and I am uh, be become part of the Mesa family uh, since 2011 as a student, and then uh, 2015 actually as a uh, full-time employee. Uh, I am here today with uh, two awesome of my co-worker, Kathy and Alicia, to present that work-life balance. I want to pass it to Kathy for introduction, please. I made the first mistake of not unmuting myself. <laughs> okay. um, thank you all for being here. As you know, my name is uh, Kathy Palestini, and I'm in the uh, LRC, the Office of um, Learning Resources and Academic Support. I've been at Mesa since May of 1999. Thank you, Kathy. Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Lopez, and I am in the Student Services Building. I work in the Transfer Career and Evaluations Office, and I've been at Mesa since 2017. And I'm looking forward to presenting today and, and sharing anything we, everything we've learned. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. I appreciate both of you. And uh, uh, for those of you just joining us, um, uh, my name is again Mona. I'm working in Institution Effectiveness and with Kathy and Alicia today, we're presenting the work-life balance. I want to say I am not an expert. This is only based on the some experience. And um, like um, I graduated from the counseling, we put uh, some presentation together that what it did work for us or what is the working in, at the best and what we think it is match with our life we want to share with everyone. So we are for sure is not the expert and we will, at the end of the session, we open the 15 minutes for the open dialogue for everyone for question and A and also share, if you guys have any some tip that we can share with everyone and we can learn about it. So I'm gonna share a screen. Okay, so what I'm gonna to present today is about the work-life balance. What is the work-life balance and why is it important? Um, work-life balance is the state of the equilibrium where the person equally portrays the demand of the one career and the demand of the person and the life. Um, basically, constantly we are um, balancing between our work life and our personal life. Uh, and it's the same like a demand and supply. Uh, the more uh, demand is there, the more supply the factory will be needs. So the more demand in our work life, we need to be preferred. And then on the other side, we have our responsibility on our work personal life that we need to balance that. Otherwise, there was no way in each of situation, neither in your life, um, personal life or your work life will be successful. Some of the most uh, common respond that lead to the poor work-life uh, balance uh, that are constantly be hearing or we recognizing, including can be increasing responsibility at work, working longer hours, increasing responsibility at home, having children, having the fam family support, having the elderly that you need to take care of them, or um, getting the different, you want to proceed your education. You need to, you need a hobby that actually you are wanted to have a time to attend to it, or um, seeing your family that they are overseas, they are not next to you. So lot, these are the most common one that it comes to your brain, or sometimes you hear it most often from your coworker or your family member that lead us to understand that actually these are the, that something is not balanced, something is not in the space. Um, these are the steps that we need to recognize, except that there is no perfect life balance. If we acknowledge that there is no perfect situation out there, there is no perfect life balance that any workshop, any presenter, any expert that they can teach you that you can follow up and say, I am set for life and that's it. I will be good to go. I will follow this model and there was no any stress will be on my life. So that's the first step we need to acknowledge. Pause and denormalize. 
Pay attention to your emotion, prioritize your health. Do not afraid to unplug and set the boundaries and work hours. Um, most often, I want to say we need to pay attention. We all sometimes afraid to be unplugged. When we are recognizing any of these steps, we need to have a chance, give a chance to ourselves to unplug and pause back and set. And also setting the boundaries of the work, work hours or even the outside your life, in your personal life. Setting the boundaries, that's the one of the biggest steps that we need to pay attention. Otherwise, we will lose in our, ourselves in between the work and a lot of other responsibility that is constantly there pulling us away. Work-life balance, reportorizing, consider your alternative, find a job that you love, make it, make, you make a time for yourself and your loved ones, take a vacation, set goal, priority, and stick to them. These are steps if you look to them, you think, oh God, this is no way this is a very perfect, you want to do that. But in the reality, when you want to step to them, you need to take action to actually lead you to these steps because otherwise it's so easy we can get lost in between our um, responsibilities and our lives. And we cannot really enjoy and even make a time of our own life, like our kids, our family members, or our friends. Uh, most likely, want most of us that we go along and we're not taking vacation. and this is not healthy. So in order to get to these steps, I get the four steps to you guys and what's, what we can do, hopefully to we can reach some balance in between our work and our personal life. The step one is we need to pause and denormalize. That's the first thing we need to do. We need to take a moment and look to what's going on. Take a step back and ask yourself, what is currently using, uh, causing you stress? On balance or dissatisfaction? How are these circumstances affecting how I perform and engage with my job? How are they impacting my personal life? What am I prioritizing? Do I am I um, sacrificing? What getting lost here? Only often you take a mental pause and acknowledge these factors can you begin to tackle them. So the taking this moment and pause and re-evaluation is very important because if we not give ourselves this space, there is no way when we can do any changes or any, any um, improvement. So it is important to always pause, step back, evaluate, and see what's going on. Step two, pay attention to your emotion. Once you increase your awareness of your current situation, examine how that situation makes you feel. Ask yourself, do I feel engaged, feel feel satisfied, or do I feel angry, stressful, sad? So these are the things most often that we not pay attention to our emotion, what is our mental health will telling us, how I feel right now. Do I feel like all the time tired, sad? I don't have, I'm stressed, anxious. If we feel having these feelings, these are the things that we need to pay attention to them. We need to pause and recognize them. Step three, priority. Increasing your connective, connective and emotional awareness. Give you the tool that you need to put things into the perspective and determine how your priority needs to be adjusted. So what priority you need to do. So these tools, when you acknowledge your feeling, it give you the tools that actually, what I need to do, what I need to adjust even, because until you're not acknowledging them, so you don't know what do you need to adjust. Step four, consider an alternative. It may be more helpful to create an alternative method of evaluation, uh, evaluating um, ourselves as we go along. Take a different approach and ask yourself these two questions as soon as you wake up. Always look to the mirror and ask yourself, how are you feeling? What do you want? So if you, when you starting your day, these two questions is basically is only important to you. You paying attention to yourself, to your mental, to your 
physical. So how I feel, what I'm feeling right now at the moment I'm going to start my day and what I want, because the, that, and that 24 hours that you do have, you can assume your times, that 24 hours, let's assume it is a $24,000 that I'm going to give you per day. And I'm going to ask you, put it in your account. By end of the day, you're going to report to me, how did you spend that $24,000? How do you want to spend it? You have it 24 hours. In the beginning of the day, you need to think about what I'm going to spend that on. So this is if we can put that in our mindset. We will be a little bit more cautious, more paying attention to the time and the priorities that we're going to set at the day for ourselves. Define success at the outside of the every day and even better the night before. So every day when you starting, as we asking these two questions to ourselves, success of that day should be matter for you, but success is different, has a different meaning for everyone. Uh, it's, success is not only all the time, is the like you graduating, you are accomplishing like, your um, whatever you are working at, the work that you need to be done, or you're buying the house. These are the big things that usually everybody is thinking as a success, but success should be the different meaning for everyone. Maybe it's for me just having a relaxed day. You know what? Don't have any stress. I want to finish it today what, by not just running away and for feeling I forgot something. That should be a success for me for one day. And at the end of the day, ask yourself, did today matter? Did today what what it was matter for me? Did I do something that it was matter to me or to go to someone else? That's the question we need to ask at the end of the day for ourselves. So basically, what I went through it was a very simple, basic thing that you need to pay attention to yourself for just a day. If you set a goal for only one day, for only one small goal, one set, one step it will and you be consistent on it. That consistently for every day, it will lead you to the big success. It'll lead you to the more unstressful love because especially after pandemic, finding ourselves in the home, remotely, constantly on the device working, we can easily just consume to our work, consume to the technology and we're not paying attention to the simple small thing around us. We are living in the California, this beautiful city. Sometimes even the sunshine that is out there, we're not paying attention. How beautiful is the sky today? These simple thing, if you just take a pause and just pay attention to it, it gives you the like a emotion and they give you the like a feeling to feel better and give you the energy to move on. We shouldn't always fill ourselves with the negative thing. Just, just give us ourselves feel. We are like a car that you need to constantly just maintain this. So that our body needs that maintenance and need the oil change and need that motivation that only ourselves we can help it and do it. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Gonna pause for a second. I know it was not, it was very simple thing. It was not, as I said, I'm not the expert, just simple thing that some step that it worked for me at least. I am my life personally is so busy. I I start my year my education when I was um, already married having my kids so I was not having the traditional way to go to the college when you are single you are not having kids um, constantly I have four or five things at the same time I have to do it and most of the time I come up with the question of my friends that how are you doing that and honestly, when I want to think about it and respond to it, I don't have a response how I want to say did it. But when I'm deeply looking to it, just by setting the simple goals and paying attention to my emotion at the moment, if something doesn't doesn't work, I will change it, or I I will <clears throat> constantly I will my priority will be changed at the moment because at that time well, something maybe it did work for me five years ago doesn't work anymore right now. So this change, if we are adopting that we can constantly change and it's okay to we change ourselves, it's okay to I change our routine, um, it will give us that move, movement so we can move and go forward.
So I will pass it to Kathy so she can start. I'm sorry, Alicia. Mm -hmm. So she can start with the detail in organization, our office, how it's going to work for us her so she can we can follow up thank you thank you so much mona um so you mona spoke a lot about work-life balance unplugging the importance of acknowledging feelings um and and just taking a pause so i'm going to kind of carry over a little bit on on that topic and hopefully you can see my screen now um so how do we go about in keeping ourselves organized um and you know first of all it's acknowledging the feelings acknowledging your everyday schedule and then pausing and then thinking, okay, how can I make my day better? How can I provide more balance? Um, and that comes with uh, being organized. And I know organization is not automatic for everyone. It isn't for me. I have to, it's a habit that I have to practice, um, but it's a healthy habit that'll, that'll keep you going on a daily. Um, and now that we wrap, are close to wrapping up the semester, it's really important to kind of take the time now to assess your work uh, situation, like your workstation, uh, your work schedule, um, things that you completed throughout the semester that you may need to like, okay, what can I file away? Uh, there was a great workshop provided by Tony Lowe on how to, on archiving and utilizing Outlook uh, in terms of archiving emails and whatnot. So I highly recommend that. Um, but let's look at that. So we're going to think about space, you know, examining our space, doing a self check in. So, so some questions you can ask yourself and, and energizers thinking about what energizes you on a daily and how to bring a little bit more more balance. Uh, Mona spoke about unplugging and, and how can we unplug and how can we bring balance to ourselves with a mindfulness practice. So space for me, it's been uh, Purchasing items that would help my my little area be a little bit more accessible to me. Um, decluttering. Um, now that it's the end of the semester, I my my office is actually in my bedroom, so I had to reorganize my my bedroom a couple times throughout the semester just so that I I would feel like there's something different going on in my space and and I I feel a little bit more refreshed. So. Just this past week, I um, moved my furniture around and I moved my uh, desk and went through emails. I've archived, I've looked at folders, I've eliminated papers that I do not need um, and kind of did like a run through of my desktop as well. So that's very important to kind of get started with that. I know it's, it's kind of like Oh, I need a little break, but that's the break that you'll need is to kind of declutter so that you can start the, the new semester, start the summer semester, um, feeling a little bit refreshed. And also, also utilizing tools that you have access to, um, to help you with uh, staying organized. So using sticky notes. Um, I like to use that to set up reminders. Um, I also use my Outlook a lot for block scheduling. Uh, so 20, 30, 45 minute increments, there's no right or wrong way to go about it. But um, I'm part of different committees. And I also have oversee like different types of projects. So I've color coded um, some of the committees that I, I'm a part of, I color code those meetings, like a specific color, it could be black, and uh, not black, green. So like green would be for like classified Senate, when I have classified Senate meetings, I block my schedule uh, for green when I have to do duties for, for classified Senate. So I can get a visual representation throughout the week of what my week may look like. Um, or for career uh, center duties, I block that with like a yellow code so that I know that those are the things that I need to take care of on a daily. Uh, so just assigning a color is helpful. Um, there's other sheets you could use like Excel sheet to keep you uh, organized. Uh, they have some templates through the Google Drive. So I, I highly recommend that. And that can help with also pro writing down project timelines um, and just staying organized. So here's an example of my outlook. Um, if you notice, um, the, the blue is the Mesa Pathways projects that I, I work on through the onboarding and career exploration. Uh, yellow would be career center and then green classify Senate. And then just the general blue would be things that I, I need to do on a daily. So that's one way to, to block 
schedule your calendar. Um, I save a lot of emails. So I just kind of create folders for that. Um, and then that'll kind of help me with going back to the emails and, and tr trying to find what, what, I, whatever it is that I need. Um, and now I've, I've learned how to archive. So I'll be implementing that. Um, like I mentioned, Google Drive offers like a to-do list template, a schedule template, um, and an assignment tracker, which you can modify it to be a project tracker. You can enter deadlines, um, maybe a soft deadline, a hard deadline for yourself, um, and then like a final deadline for, for submission for whoever you are reporting to that you need to submit projects to. Uh, so I, I love Google Drive. So this is one, one way to implement that. Um, in addition to that, I keep two notebooks. Uh, one is for my committees and work group meetings. Um, so I use like little post-its to kind of divvy up the, the different meetings that I attend throughout the semester of the year. And then the other notebook is my just my to-do list. Um, I like to write things down so that I can remember because I have a terrible memory, I will forget. Um, and just keeping two notebooks has been very helpful for me. Um, I do add certain tasks on Google Outlook, like when I reserve, when I block time to work on something, I'll kind of just add two bullets of what I need to address within Outlook. Um, but primarily every, I, I write down everything down just because I'm more, um, more of a visual person in, in that sense. And it's a very important to do a daily self check-in. Um, like Mona had mentioned, you know, take a pause, ask yourself, how are you feeling? Um, and what do those feelings mean? Uh, the, our feelings impact us on the daily. So one thing is you can check in with yourself in the morning, but also do a daily end of the day check-in. I love end of the day check-ins because then you can review what you accomplished throughout the day and then what you still need to uh, do. And then you can write that down on your little notebook that you reserve for to-do lists or, or add it on your calendar and block it for the next day so that like that, you don't have to think about it for the remainder of your evening. And, and you've already organized yourself at the end of the day of what needs to get done for the next day, what is priority um, and what can wait. So one of the things that you can ask yourself is how are you feeling? How am I feeling right now? How do I feel physically? Is there anything from yesterday that's impacting me today? Or is there anything from this morning that's still impacting me today? Um, so those are things to, to, to ask yourself for the end of the day check-in. Um, and to notice them, it's important to notice your feelings, to label them. Sometimes things happen that they just, they just do. And you need to val validate them, find the origin, but then also give a purpose to it and then let it go. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, a new day will be tomorrow and you, it's best to just let it go and, and validate the feelings. And then think about how can I gain energy again? How can I en gain energy for my next area of my life, which could be personal, your work life, home balance, uh, your tasks for your work. Um, so think about energizers. How can you incorporate these, co incorporate these throughout the day? Uh, through body movement, a breathing exercise, having a nutritious snack, uh, caring for others, um, or going outside for a short walk, loop around your backyard. Um, or if you're already, if you are uh, on campus every so often, maybe taking a short walk around the campus. So those are the things that you can think about for energizers. Um, in addition, there's, there's YouTube. You can find so much on YouTube in terms of mindfulness, uh, stretching. So there's, uh, I've linked this um, website. It's a YouTube video, but um, it'll be part of the resources that we send out after the workshop. Um, and you can do five minute stretches via YouTube throughout your day. Uh, here's a couple of examples. Um, and then for me personally, I like to be outside in nature once in a while. So midday, I'll, I'll go outside, I'll, I'll go for a walk, I'll take nature pictures, because I just I love nature. At a sometime early January, I was uh, repotting succ succulents a lot and just kind of planting new little plants. And, um, but at this point, I'm more into taking pictures. 
and that gives me energy. Um, and when you do choose to, to do something that energizes you, um, take the time to enjoy it. Add variety every, every week. You know, one week you could focus on taking a walk. Another week you can focus on uh, maybe listening to a podcast. Uh, another week it could be with uh, doing stretches on YouTube, five minute stretches, but start out slowly um, and keep yourself accountable. You know, check in with yourself on a Friday. Like, how was I successful this week? Did I, did I have a nutritious snack? Did I move? Um, and with time, you know, that, that gets reinforced and have fun at the same time. It's really important to, to have fun. And, and so that that'll give you energy. Um, in addition to that, it's, having mindfulness practice. So how do you create that balance? Um, one, we've acknowledged feelings. Two is now, okay, how can we practice with mindfulness? Uh, so there's different ways of practicing a mindful minute. I love mindful minutes because it's just one minute. So choose something, an image, um, think about something that will anchor you in the present, bring attention to this anchor. It could be a picture of the ocean. It could be, for me, I love this picture that I took on, on, a, on a walk a while back. Um, uh, at times you'll get distracted during that mindful minute, but notice the distraction. Where does your mind wander? And then bring attention back to yourself and just repeat. A mindful minute takes practice because we're so inundated with so much throughout our days, but just practicing what will be very helpful. There is a mindful minute video resource that I have available for all of you. There's a couple of them, there's four, um, and it covers mindful minute and it gives you a breakdown of, of how to practice it. So that'll be shared with everyone as a after workshop resource, but here's one of them. And there's about four, there's different voices for each and you can just kind of choose which one aligns with you. One of them has like nature, uh, music so that that can also be very helpful um, but this is all I have in terms of things that have worked for me that I hope would work for you um, and once again just having a mindful minute practicing daily uh, check-ins end of the day check-ins are very important um, I know morning check-ins with yourself are very good but end of the day is also good so that you can enjoy the rest of your evening and not really think about your to-do list or, or anything of that matter. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alicia. We're gonna have Kathy here. All right, hi. So um, I really appreciate the tips that um, have been given so far by Mona and by Alicia. And so what I'm about to do is um, share with you uh, my story at Mesa, how I've done different things that have helped me to, to be able to have such a, a career for so many years and, and to still remain energized and excited about, um, about going to work every day. So, okay, so um, next slide, please. So basically when I, before I came to Mesa, I had various jobs in high school and college. Um, when I graduated SDSU, I had a bachelor's degree in uh, business management. And so then I was able to get a job at Mesa. I was the uh, part-time senior clerical assistant for the evening dean's office. And so I did that for um, a little while. And I remember my first week, I got my first tip from someone on campus. And she is a person that had been working at Mesa for years. And I remember the first thing that I learned was, she said, come to work every day, do your job, check in, check out, and do nothing more and nothing less. And just the way that she like approached me, I thought, wow, okay, maybe this person's a little burnt out. You know, I, I don't know if I want to be that person that's going to be working somewhere for a long time. Um, but I learned later on that she, is, she was a great advocate for the classified staff. And because my position was new, some of the duties were still being worked out. So she was just looking out for me. And so that's kind of why I wanted to share my story as well. So I can hopefully give you some tips that will help you in your careers. Next slide, please. Okay. 
So uh, when I was uh, promoted after a while, I was promoted to a new position, senior secretary for the new Office of Instructional Services and Economic Development. And so my job quickly became this continuous cycle of planning and preparing, evaluating, establishing uh, new processes, procedures, different things you were learning to do um, for the campus. So I learned quickly that um, I was going to be overwhelmed, but I had to find a way to be overwhelmingly organized. And for me, what that means is I go down to like the very detail of I reuse the same formats for different reports. I have formats I've used for years and years that work for various topics. They may not even be related to each other. I also use consistent language in a lot of my emails, um, or I'll use the same one from last year if we're doing the same thing this year and just update it. Um, I've also taken a lot of mini meeting minutes through the years. And so I had realized quickly that I needed to first become familiar with the agenda items. That's really helpful because sometimes there's acronyms or things that they're talking about that you don't know ahead of time. So you kind of get lost in the discussion. Um, I also find out too how much detail is needed because some meetings they want you to get dollar amounts and who said what and who made the motion, but others you're just getting an overall feel of what the discussion was about. I also like to practice what's called front loading and thanking my former self. So this is a little bit of a strange thing that I do, but at the end of the day, when I pack up my stuff for the day, I write notes and I like say what my meeting is going to be the next day, what I have going on, what's on my agenda, and then I make it all organized because I like to leave the desk looking clean. So the next day when I come, I'm looking at this stuff going, okay, I can do this. And so I literally take a moment to say, thank you, former self, for getting future self ready for the next day. And so it kind of gets me started on the right foot. And I like to do that because it's like feeling grateful for the work that I put in and, and acknowledging what I do to keep myself on track. I also do a lot of work in between semesters. So that way, when the fall semester gets going, spring semester gets going, a lot of my templates and things are ready to go so that all I have to do is just follow up with them and, and send them out or whatever I have to do. So as I mentioned in the new office, we were responsible for 12 major functions um, on the campus, like program review, research, um, things like that. So by having all these different functions, we needed to come together with a chart that would help us figure it all out and, and stay on track. So that's when we got the spaghetti chart. So I got the plate of spaghetti there, but um, if you go to the next slide, I will show you the actual format that we ended up going with. So the actual format we went with shows you at the top, we have the different committees or processes, different functions in our office. And then within them, there's like subtopics, like a subcommittee or a subgroup or a sub report and things like that. And so then you can just see all the way down the line um, what we did in order to keep track of all the different things that we had going on. And in, and in my own, format, I had like a timeline and things like that that had even more details that helped me go keep me keep I'm sorry, help me keep going forward. Okay, next slide please. So how did I make it happen? Well, uh, I mentioned that I um, got started in 1999. I had my first baby in 2001 and my second one in 2003. So I was trying to balance, you know, full-time work and having two little kids at home. I mean, I'm married, I have a husband, but you know, the mom's the one who, at least in my household, I was the one who was responsible for, you know, the doctor's appointments and so forth. And I also wanted to be there for them when they went to school and had different things going on. So one of the more important things that I've done is I always, always, always make sure that I have a positive working relationship with my supervisor. And so that way we can work out so I could be there for my kids, but then I also was able to make sure the office was covered. Sometimes what that meant for me was, I would uh, drop my kids at school, go to work in the morning for a couple hours. I would come back to my neighborhood where the school is and be there for an award ceremony, and then jump back in the car and drive all the way back to work to work for a couple hours, maybe I had a meeting or whatever. And so that way was kind of the best of both worlds. And I didn't mind doing the driving so long as I was able to be there for my kids. When I joined the School of Learning Resources, um, I'm sorry, go back to that other screen. Thank you. When I joined the School of Learning Resources, that was an adventure in itself. Uh, the first thing I had to learn was finding my way back from the restroom. 
And I know everybody who's been in that building, someone's got lost at one point or another. Um, and that's my office at the very top. And I pointed out because it's a really high drop to the ground. It's like you look down, yeah, but it's a beautiful view. So I invite you all to come up when we're back on campus, of course. But when I came to the library and there was a lot of foot traffic and um, a lot of students in the building, really a lot more energy than what I was used to. Uh, a lot of my work is behind the scenes because I work primarily with faculty and administrators, um, but I also interact a lot more now with students. So, you know, they're, they're usually stressed because they're, they're looking for a class, they're late, or the faculty person's being evaluated and they need to know the next steps. So when I found my why, I realized it's because I already know that they're stressed before they even come into my office. So I'm gonna do whatever I can to help them. I'm gonna walk them to the classroom. I'm gonna make that phone call um, to find out who they need to go see in, in admissions. I'm going to explain the next steps of their evaluation. I'm going to help them, you know, visualize what needs to happen next and when to kind of put them at ease. Because I know that the next thing they have to do, uh, my goal is for them to then be able to move on to the next thing in, on their to-do list because we're all busy. Um, I want them to leave my office feeling better able to deal with that. Um, like if they need to go to class or they need to teach the class or they're going to go home after a long day at work. I want them to, if they came in stressed, I want them to leave and not be stressed. So make it a good environment. Next slide, please. So these are some tips I either knew coming into work because that's just the kind of person I am or I learned them along the way. So the first thing is you have to be yourself. Um, be yourself. I start each day on a positive note and I approach it with a smile and a sense of humor. Um, I also take the time to get to know my supervisor and their style. Um, we don't always mesh, but I know that some managers like uh, a more higher level of detail, while others just want a summary. And so you kind of end up adapting to, to both different ways of doing it. And I also take the time to build relationships with people on and off campus. Um, I interact with City, Miramar, and um, the district. I sometimes uh, interact with like Grossmont different places that, that maybe have questions. Excuse me. Um, and so I'm able to give them a hand and let them know, you know, how we do it. Um, second is always be accountable to yourself. I've been working with a lot of different leadership styles, um, especially during many different times of transition. So there's a lot going on, but I always think that I have to, I know what needs to be done and I don't let things slip through the cracks. In other words, I'm accountable to myself. I know it has to get done and I'm just gonna keep moving forward no matter what is going on um, around me to make sure it gets done. So no matter where you're at in your career, um, I would say you should always find opportunities to learn more about your job and its potential because my job has been satisfying through the years because I always played an active role in whatever the process was that we were talking about. Also, it's okay to be real. It's okay to take a break and ask for advice. Um, you know, I often need to take a moment to step back, take a break. Nobody's perfect. Nobody knows everything, right? And your job is an important part of your life, but it's just one part of your life. Also, this is a big one for me. Don't judge yourself by what others are doing, and it's okay to stay. Just because you see others are going back to school or getting promoted or advancing in their careers, it doesn't mean you have to do it too. I mean, sure, go for that promotion if it makes sense to you, but it's also okay to be happy with where you are now. Now that my daughters are in college, my focus shifted less on myself and my own career and more toward helping them get started on their college educations and, and their futures. Also too, you know, we work in education, so I would say expect to continue learning and teaching also. Um, our district gives us many opportunities for um, professional development and career advancement, and we have a lot of support for personal and professional assistance. Also for me, when I'm learning something new, I ask a lot of questions. I'm not afraid to ask questions until I understand what it is that I need to do. It's also okay, and I'm fine with doing this as well, it's okay to admit that you made a mistake. Um, it's okay to, to say that you don't have the answer, but you want to find out what that is. And also, too, in my experience, um, especially with all the different transitions with supervisory positions, um, 
I know the supervisor isn't always gonna be your teacher. And you're not always gonna be the student. You're gonna be able to teach them and they're gonna be able to teach you at certain times. So for me, I feel the best times are those when we set aside what our titles are, and then we all come together for the common goal of helping the students succeed. And the last one is reassess your goals and ask yourself if you're still satisfied. And this kind of goes along with some of the things Alicia said and uh, what Mona had said as well. Um, I'm here to tell you, if you don't already know this, your job is not always gonna be fun and it's not always gonna be rewarding. Sometimes you're gonna question why you're there or what you're doing, but you have to also trust yourself that the decision you made at that moment for your career, you made that decision with the best information that you had available to you at that time. And of course, like what uh, Alicia and Mona said, ask yourself periodically if you're still satisfied overall with your job and then do what's best for you. So one of the things that has really kept me going all these years is the people that I get to interact with every day, the faculty, the staff, the students. I just always love the energy at Mesa. Anytime I go anywhere, I talk to anybody. They always have favorable things to say about our campus. And, and that's why I love it and I enjoy working here. Um, I love watching different programs grow and evolve through the years. And on a personal level, um, this time at home has given me really a chance to stop, reset, and figure out what my future is going to look like, what my priorities are going to look like, and basically to let go of that old routine that I had, that, that hamster wheel that you're on every single day, go to work, come home, go to work, come home. It's kind of given me a chance to really appreciate the time that I have with my family, the time that I have at home. And, and things that I wanna do for myself. So now all these years are coming full circle for me. And now I am, I know what it feels like to be that coworker who's been around for a long time. And so that's why I'm here today giving you the tips that I've given you. Um, I will leave you with one last tip if you're not already doing this for yourselves. Think of the positive side of what's going on right now with being at home. And no matter where you're at with your career, use this time to reset and refocus yourself and what your priorities are going forward. Thank you. I'll turn it back to Mona for any questions. Thank you so much, Kathy. I really appreciate your, um, your tips. Same thing, Alicia. At this time, we still have some more time. So I want you, if anyone has any question, anyone has anything you want to share, as you notice, um, all our presentation basically was the little bit our experience or would it work for us so and kind of sharing with you guys because we went through the whole year craziness of change and getting co constantly we need to be just um change our priority you know and change the way our routine and absolutely getting these changes coming to our life sometimes is dec decrease our like increase our stress and help life so sharing these tips with each other is going to help us see if what other people they do will it work for them so maybe it worked for us too and thank you so much for being here listening to us and um, that also um gave us the hope that um to give give you give us this space to actually we can share and be with you guys so i appreciate that and thank you don't forget to put your theme color here so we can give you the point too.